Harvey. Join on Sunday mornings to worship and praise and learn and encourage one another and, and, and to celebrate our God. We also gather online to say hi across time and space as well. It's time for us to pause, to breathe, to settle in, to be aware, to make space. So I invite you to take that nice deep breath in and breathe out. Breathe in and out. And JR is just going to play a nice little piece of music as we prepare to worship together. This morning is on screen here. I'll read the smaller print. I invite you to respond in the full because it is good to give God thanks, to sing praises to the Most High. We will sing the Lord to God who has made us glad. Let us declare God's steadfast love in the morning and God's faithfulness by night. And whatever comes our way, we can always trust in the love and enduring the love of Jesus. So come to worship God with thankful, joyful hearts. Let us praise our holy name together. And so I invite you to join your heart and mind as you pray together, shall we? Living, loving God, from you come vitality, love, and joy. Your peace is our companion. Your love is our strength. Your son is our hope. Your spirit nurtures us into purpose and potential, surprises us with new life around us. And while the earth continues to bloom around us in color, in sound, and even in smells, Lord, we bring you our prayers and that your spirit will renew in us the gifts we need to serve you in faithfulness and the example of Christ our Lord. We thank you, Abba, for being the perfect Father. We thank you for giving us Father, the fatherly role models. We thank you for, for all the people that nurture and love us throughout our lives. Living, loving God, as we watch our gardens and our children grow, we confess we often resist the change that growth can bring. Too many times we form our own opinions about so many things and we cling to them. There are times we, we fear new insights or new direction. Lord, we ask that you forgive us Forgive us when we, we think we already know enough. Forgive us when we're too stubborn. Forgive us when we don't put love first. We do indeed lay it all at the foot of the cross. We ask, Lord, that you grant us faith like the rock on which we can build our lives to be able to grow with your blessing, to become a mighty sign of your living kingdom, living among us. Amen. 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 I'm reading a book at home. Um, I have a, a collection of, of books that I've read just in the past year, which are welcome to, uh, to borrow and to take a look through on the piano and the fellowship hall. I discovered a new book while I was on the retreat in April. Um, and it caught my eye because it was about forgiveness, and it was about grief, and it's about the 12 steps. Three things that just tug at my heart really. And as I'm reading through 
just uh, yesterday morning, it talks about forgiveness. And I, I read and, and hear in my mind the very words that I would share with you most Sundays. And I'll, I'll bring the book I highlighted it up, and I should have brought it this morning. And it says, God is not mad at you. There is nothing that you can do to make God love you any less. Nothing you can do to make God love you. It was right there in black and white in this book. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Think I'm on the right track here. <laughs> there is nothing that you can do to make God love you any less. There is nothing you have done to make God love you any less. You are a beloved child of God. Forgiveness is yours. All we have to do is ask for it. Because the grace, to many of us, we may say grace is free, but that grace came at a cost. And Jesus paid that price. So that grace is free to us. Receive that grace. Receive that love. Receive that forgiveness because God loves you. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. We're going to get into the Holy Word of Scripture as we continue to praise the Lord. And so... We breathe, we let the choir breathe, we give thanks for the choir, we pray to God for patience and persistence. We ask that you speak to us through the scriptures and inspire us so that we may be changed by what we hear. Open our minds and our hearts to a fresh encounter with Christ, your living word. Amen. And so I invite Joy to come up and bring us the word this morning. Our scripture reading this morning will bring us into two of the Psalms. As we turn to Psalm 61 and 62, these two Psalms and the two that follow them are linked together by a common theme of reliance upon our God. Our two Psalms are also attributed to David and were also written to be set to music. May we hear how the psalmist commits himself to God as we read responsibly together, starting at Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4. Hear my cry, O God. This is my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will call to you. I will call as my heart grows faint. For you have been my refuge. I long to dwell in your tent forever. And now we will continue to Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. Trust my soul finds rest in God. Truly my soul finds rest in God. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. As we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Seventh chapter, how Jesus concluding his sermon on the mount started earlier in chapter 5. Jesus has been reaching to the crowds from the Beatitudes on, and he concluded his mountainside teaching with a lesson on the wise and the foolish builders in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. Who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the living word. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are a cornerstone, I pray, and in uh, my own words and meditations of our hearts, we may learn to learn today. We're going to talk about the rock that we heard about in the living word. And when I speak of the rock, I'm not talking about this rock. And I'm not talking about this rock. Jesus, we often hear that, that Christ is our 
our soul with all our wishes to God. God has a lot of wishes. No. Jesus referred to this today in our reading of that solid foundation. He says, building your life on the rock of Jesus Christ. Building your life on the words, on his teachings, is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And then Jesus gave us the example of the storm as well. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew, and yet the house remained because its foundation was firmly anchored upon the rock. And we know that storms can be havoc on buildings and houses. And we're blessed here that we don't have to deal with hurricanes and storms and some of the wilder weather found in other parts of the world, but they're grateful for that. But we have our own storms that face us. And even the storms here can cause a lot of damage. And we all know that in calm weather, any house can stand, even a house of God. But when the wind and the storms blow through, houses can fall. And this is true as well in the winds and storms of our own lives. So very true. But when our lives are built on that firm, foundation, when our lives, our daily lives, are built on that rock, Christ, our cornerstone, we can then weather the storm. We can stand set and firm, knowing that God is our rock. Even Psalm 18, God is often referred to as the rock when we hear scripture. We read that in Psalm 52. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And in Psalm 18, the psalmist declares, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock. You see the repetition there? In whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. God is often described as the rock there in Hebrew scripture. Let's take a look and read. But it's not just described, God's not just described as a rock, but the rock, my rock. And the Israelites understood this in those Hebrew times. They understood that God was, was not just one source of strength and protection, but God was and is the source, their strength and ours. The source, the source of strength and hope and peace. Their only hope, their only refuge. This metaphor of the rock points to God being strong, steadfast, Consistent, not easily moved, not easily shaken, giving refuge to those in need. Even Moses left their God, spoke of it. Deuteronomy chapter 32, speaking of God, he is the rock, his works are perfect, all God's ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. The source. Now, I don't know about you, but I need reminders constantly. Constantly. And digging into the Word of God allows us. The solid rock of Jesus helps me and definitely you stand firm in a mudslide world. Because life is full of storms and mudslides. And no matter what blows through our lives, I know I can turn to God as my rock, 
majesty, my strength, in God's presence, I can find that peace, knowing that God is steadfast and true, and no matter what God is for us, the Lord will never be defeated. In Christ, there is peace and steadfastness and safety. In, in Christ, it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be hard times. Sometimes we do hit rock bottom. Sometimes it seems as if God allows us to hit that rock bottom so that we can realize that God is the rock at the bottom. So this is how Paul does it. Just a part. But we can trust in that rock. We can trust in the Lord for our day-to-day -day lives, not just on a Sunday morning. We need a firm foundation. We need the rock. That foundation is the Lord. And not only do we get that, that firm foundation and that, that shelter and refuge and strength, but there's so many other blessings that come up through as a result of it as well. In the Lord, we find that love. We find the peace. We find the hope that even if we are at rock bottom, guess what? There's nobody but us. Keep looking up. In the Lord, there is forgiveness, faithfulness, there is power, there is strength, there is strength to endure, strength to carry on. Even when we find ourselves living in between those two words of too broad and blessed. There is strength and hope in the rock. And that rock is more than just the Sunday. Power, strength, protection, provision. It's extended to all of us who believe in Christ. Because too often when we rely on our own strength or when we place our own hope in other worldly sources, just as the Hebrews did as they wandered They did it time and time again, and why sometimes I do it time and time again. We discover how flimsy these other sources we turn to can be. When God's people trust in God's provision, when they trust in God as their rock and their strength, then God's people find the strength. God's people find the courage. God's people find the hope to carry on and God's people can find peace in the shelter of God's magnificent love. And so I invite you to place your trust in that firm foundation. In fact, I want to invite you to sing For him that is a good God, how firm are God's feet.
Australia to share together from their hearts and minds. And we pray for one another in the world around us. When you hear me say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond. We are lost and out of salvation. And we need to hear what the Lord has said. So let's pray. God, in whom we live and move and have our being, as we consider the world around us today, we are so grateful to know that you are near. We thank you that your presence will not fail us. We thank you that you are our steadfast rock of our lives, no matter what challenge we may face. And we are aware of so many challenges in our lives, in the lives of, of those who care about us, in the lives of others in the world around us. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us to trust that you will never give up on situations which we may find overwhelming. God, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. In faithful silence, we lay before you the concerns on our own hearts. We pray for those people and places who have been in the headlines on the news. We pray for all who cry out to you in situations we can't even imagine. Lord, you know the hard places, the soft places. You know our prayers. And so we lift them up to you now. Lord, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. We pray for all those who may be suffering from illnesses of any sort. Those coping with ongoing treatment, those waiting or recovering from surgery. We pray for those who are grieved or burdened by loss. Lord, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. Lord, we also pray for those who may be waiting for something significant. Maybe a birth, a trip, a visit, a move, a new job, or even retirement, graduation. Grant us all patience in times of reckless waiting. Lord, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. We pray for students and teachers and all those who serve in the educational setting whose graduations are taking place. As families and students are preparing for summertime and transition, we ask that you bless all the learning that has occurred, grant rest and renewal to each learner as well as each teacher. Lord, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. And Lord, as, as North America celebrates fathers, we come in all shapes and sizes. Fathers are both Grandpas, brothers. We give thanks. We give thanks. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless all churches across the world with leaders, with volunteers the faithful work of churches in our community. Unite us in the witness <coughs> of our love of Jesus. Open our eyes to new possibilities to love and serve together. I pray for this very day, family, Lord. There are times when we are unsure what the future is going to bring. There are times when we are unsure 
remember how the girls will be educated. But we trust in you, the living rock. Lord, in your mercy, be our rock and our salvation. And so we unite our voices in that perfect prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I thank you for being a part of this wonderful big family. I thank you, I thank all of you, men and role models out there who give us rocks of wonder to build our lives. So we're spending all the men home with rocks as a reminder that Christ is our rock and our salvation, that we can hide ourselves in the rock. As you go forth for the rest of your day, the rest of your week, may you continue to know that wherever you go, God has been with you. Did we go back to the end? Don't just say yes. <laughs> Thank you. Wherever you go, God is sending you wherever you are. God is with you. And remember, as we said last week, you are never too old. And it is never too late. Christ is with us. Hide yourself, build yourself in and on that rock. Christ, who dwells within you by the power of the Holy Spirit, truly does want to do something in and through you, no matter how you may feel, whether in age or in death. God is with us always. So as you go from this place, go in peace, go in hope, but above all things, my friends, go in love.